Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel and in this video we are going to be discussing about the planned disease classifications using deep learning. And this is a demo application built by using Python and Flux. So let's see the demo application first. So first I'm going to click at a choose the file and choose on the picture from my directory testing folder. I'm going to select the pictures and click at to open and click at to predict. And this is a healthy leaf, healthy leaf plant. If I select another photo, let's say I'm going to select the photo from the rust and let's select this one, click on open. And if I predict, and you can see here, this is nothing but the rust. So if I select another photo from my another directory that's called powdery. So this is one kind of disease of plant that's called the powdery and it's also predict it correctly. Now in this video, we're going to build this full application from the escorts using deep learning, Python and Flux. So without wasting any time, let's start the tutorial now. So in order to build in the full application, we're going to be using a data set from Kaggle that's called the plant disease recognition data set, which are containing three files called the train, test and the abilitations. And each folder containing three files, or you can say the number of classes. First one is called healthy. Second one is called the powdery. And third one is a rust. Now using this data set, we're going to be building our deep learning model. And after that, we're going to be building our web applications using Flux. So now what are you going to do? You just need to create here one account on that. And after that, you can click on the download and download the data set on your directory. So well, so this is the code for that. And I will draw the code in my Jupyter notebook. You can also do it in EBS code or the PyCharm or Google Colab itself. If you don't have any much more amount of GPU. So I am going to explain all the code line by line so that you don't need to worry about that. What actually happening inside this code and you also building our deep learning model. Don't worry on that. So now I'm going to start the tutorial now and explaining all the code line by line. So first, what you need to do, you need to load the data from our data set folder, right? And also need to check that if our data is balanced or imbalanced, right? So first, what you can do, you can simply create here functions which can actually help us to get the data from here and also do the counting, right? So for that, we need to import the OS. Then you need to create here on function that's called def total files. And you create here a lambda function and which one actually creating the list of the each folder, each folder and give here the length, right? So for that, I need to give here my path. That's called the training file, healthy, the powder in the rust. So this is nothing but my classes. I mean, how many classes are available inside of our data set folder? So you have the three classes, healthy, powdery and the rust. So you simply actually give it the path of that data set. We need to go on the train, then train and the healthy, right? So this is the path for that. And again, the path for the test file and also the validation file, simple. Then what I can do, you can simply print it out. So you can run the code from here and also you can use the shortcut technique that's called the shift and the enter in the keyboard, shift and the enter and to run the code automatically. So you can see number of the healthy images are training set is 458, right? And you can see the testing set and also the validation set. So now let's have a look the data first. So let's have a look one healthy images. So this is the healthy leaf images. Quite good, right? So let's see also the rust one. I mean the affected one. So this is the rust images with having some uh, spot with having red and the black. So what we're going to do, we're going to simply classify them. Which one is a goat leaf or which one is a bat leaf, right? Or which one is a powdery leaf, right? So see, we have the limited amount of data. And also one more important thing, in every video, you are building the machine learning or deep learning model, we need to divide the data into the train, test and split. But in this data set, you, need to do, you don't need to do that because the Kaggle authority actually do this code again. I mean, the data set, uh, the person or the member actually build, building the data set, he actually do this already, right? You can see the training set, the testing set and the validation set. That's when he should divide the data set in the train, test and the validation already. You don't need to do it. You, you, you don't need to do it. So that's one plus point for you. So now what you can do, we can simply do the data argumentation. Now the question is, what is data argumentation and why you need to do that? See, we have the limited number of data, just uh, less than 500, less than 500. So how can we do the data argumentation in the deep learning? How can you do that? Yes, we can do it if with the same images using some technique, using some technique that's called the image data generator. So who can rescale the images, who can give you the shear range, and who can also zoom in or zoom out and do the horizontal flip and create some new images, create some new images in your heap memory, in your memory, in your memory, 
right? It don't actually store it in, in your folder. It will actually store it in the memory. So let's say I have the 400 images. So it will generate, let's say 300 images. So total 700 images. That's mean if you give here the 500 images, it will generate more 300 or 400 and create a model for that. Create a model for that. That's called the image data generator or you can say the data argumentation. So what you can do, you can simply using here the image data generator and create an object for that and it will take some parameter. We need to actually rescale this. And after that, you're going to give here our image data generator, right? So we're actually creating the object for that. Now what you can do, we can simply run the shell. And after that, you're going to apply it in our full data set. We're going to apply it in our full data set. So we have the three folder, train, test, and the validation. So we're going to be using the training set and the validation set. Then using this test set, we're going to checking for the accuracy. We're going to checking for the accuracy. So for that, what we can do, we can simply flow from the directory. See one more thing, flow from the directory. How can you actually use it? How can you get one data set, which one is already divided into train, test, and split. If you're trying to flow from the directory and also do the data argumentations, you're using this one. That's called a flow from directory. That's mean when you are passing your data inside your image data generator, you need to use this flow from directory. So it will taking the all images from your directory and create and create one extra, create one extra, uh, you can say the extra directory for that, right? In your memory. So you can see found one hundred, uh, three hundred two two images belong three classes. It have the three classes, right? It will automatically flow the data from your directory. You don't need to use the OS. You don't need to use the globe. Don't worry. And you can see we got here the 100, uh, 1322 images, which on the actual images, which on the actual images. It have also the image data generator images, but it's not showing up here. It's not showing up. It is stored in our memory. It is stored in our memory. Now what we can do, we can simply building our deep learning model, or you can say the CNN model. Now, which kind of model are you going to be using here? Obviously CNN, because this is an image data. If it is a numerical data, you can use the ANN or the RNN or the LSTM, right? Based on your data set. If it is, if it is time series type of data, you can obviously use the LSTM or the RNN, right? So now what you can do, we can simply building our deep learning model or you can say CNN model. So you're going to be building here sequential model. So there are two types of model are available, sequential and another one is called the functional. So sequential mean you're going to be passing the data from one layer to another layer and do the convolution operation and do the convolution operation. So for the input the keras dot model, input the sequential. Then input the convolute, the max pooling layer. So there are so many max pooling uh, factor actually available, max pooling 2D, uh, the average pooling, right? Available, right? So you can see the flatten. So flatten what it will do, when you give your data, it's a multi-dimensional data. Multi-dimensional means so many dimensions. So when you pass it inside your CNN model, you need to give it in a one kind of vector, just a single vector. So that's you're using here the flatten and dance is for the final layer, the input or the output layer, right? So first you can do create here the sequential layer and we actually give here my kernel uh, 32, right? 32 and three cross three filter and input shape is 225, 2253. So 225 is mean height and the weight and three is number of channel number of channel and we have the activation function that's called the ReLU. So ReLU is actually the formula of the ReLU is a max of a max of zero comma z, right? Max of zero comma z. That's when you're taking the maximum value. It will take the maximum value. Then what I can do, we can simply give it the pooling, the max pooling having the pool size of the two. It will take in the maximum value for the each full size, right? Then we're going to give here the 64 again, 64 kernel and activation is a ReLU activation function and add here on a max pooling layer. Then finally, you can do use here the flatten layer. I mean, creating here one single vector and give you the dance layer of the 64 and dance layer of the three. So three is nothing but my number of classes. I mean, how many classes are available in your data set? We have three classes. We have three classes. So let's say put here three and activation function is softmax. So because this is the multi-class classifications, so that's why you give here the softmax. Otherwise, you can give here sigmoid. We can give you the sigmoid. Then we need to, we need to also compile the model. So before you fitting or you can training the model, you need to also compile it. See one more important thing, we give your loss as a categorical across entropy. So when you have multi-class classification types of project, you need to give us here the categorical cross entropy. If it's a binary classification, it should be the binary cross entropy. 
and matrix is same accuracy and optimize that is the atom you can also use a gradient descent asterisk gradient descent also you can also do it right so now what you can do you can simply compile it and after that after compiling you need to we need to okay modulation define i need to we need to also run this shell so that's why and we need to compile it now and after compiling we need to we need to train the model we need to train the model and you can see the batch size is 16 right you can also give a 32 it's up to you right it's based on your system requirement right you can also let's give here the 32 right now and epox is right now five epox is right now five and validation data you can give here the validation from it's coming from the validation generator and the validation base size, let's say 16. So if I go here, uh, it just have in that uh, 20 images. So it's better. We can give you the batch size of 16, right? Because we have the low amount of data. So that's why you can also give you 32 or the 64. It's up to you. So now what I can do, I'm going to simply run the code and to start the epochs. So what are actually epochs? Epochs we need to go from the forward propagation and again go to the back propagation and actually calculate the weight. And based on the weight, it will actually minimize this weight minimize the cost function or you can say minimize the weight so that's called the epochs i mean one forward and one backward and update the weight and update the weights so this is nothing but called the epochs so after that what you can do uh, we can also generate here one figure for that this is called the accuracy curve so i'll back again when the training part is completed right so well so our model training is completed and you can see here i got here the 90 percent accuracy and the validation accuracy is 88%. So if I try to uh, click it on the shell to plotting the accuracy curve and the loss curve, and you can see here, uh, our model is working really fine. It's not overfitting or underfitting the data uh, because it's, it don't have any gap right now, right? That's when our model is working really, very fine. So you can also increase your epochs in order to also increase your accuracy. We got here the 90% accuracy. You can also increase it by increasing the epoch number, right? So now what I can do, I can simply going to save the file uh, in a model file, model.as5, so that we can use it in the later on, or you can also use it in your own devices also. So now what I can do, we can simply test it out. We can simply test it our new data. So I'm going to taking one image from the Rust in our directory. Then after that, we're going to testing out, right? So for the what you need to do, we need to also load the images same as it is we do in our data set. And after that, you need to convert this image into the number array. So we are going to create here a function which can actually uh, give here the pre-process image. So first you need to load in the images with having the target size of 225 cross 225. Because if I go up in our uh, CNN model, we give here the input shape is 225, 2253. So that's why you need to also resize the images in this uh, kind of sizes, 225 cross 225. Then we are going to pass it inside our image to array. Image to actually do, you need to actually convert this image into one NumPy array so that we can actually normalize it. We can normalize it. And you can see here, it should divide the data into 255. So why 255 actually? If you see one images, grayscale, grayscale or the RGB images, let's say RGB images, it have the value starting from 0 to 255. So if I'm trying to normalize the data between 0 and 1, we will divide the data into big number, the maximum number. You can see the maximum number. So the maximum number is 255. So that's why we divide the data using the 255 then we do the exp expand dimensions to the expand the dimension of the data so that we can get our actual prediction value so now what i can do i'm simply going to run the shell and after that i'm going to click it to model dot predict and it'll give me one predictions right it give me the prediction in the array now in this array we're going to taking the maximum value i mean which one having the maximum number of maximum number of predictions so this is the real predictions so for that, what I can do, we can simply using here the labels, right? So that we can also check the labels. Then simply going to pass here the np.arg max and try to see the predictions. So our prediction is called Rust. If I go here, we actually collect the image from the Rust folder inside our test. See one thing, see one thing here. We actually train the model using our training set and the validation set. We don't use here the testing set. So testing set is nothing but for the testing the model to checking the accuracy. Right? That how our model is really working. Is it able to predict that data that is new to our data set or not? If it is not able to predict it, that's when it has some problem in your model. Maybe the problem of the overfitting or the underfitting problem. So now what I can do, we can simply using this model to building one web applications using Flux, right? So now, well, you can see here one file is generated. It's called the model.as5. So this is our model file. You can also open the model file. 
So you can also see the architecture that you build in your Jupyter notebook code. So you can see we get here the image size of 2 to 5 cross 2 to 5 cross 3 and also having one input layer, the convolution layer of 32, right? 32 kernels and the max pooling layer and also com 2D, two convolution layer and max pooling layer, again flatten layer and dense layer of 64 and the dense of 3. 3 means our output uh, classes, you can see number of classes, right? So this is how you can also visualize your model in, 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 in the application that's called the Natron. You can also install the application on a Unix machine then you can see the your model architecture. So now what I can do, we can simply use this model file and building one application that's called web applications using Flux, right? So well, this is a code for that in order to building the applications using Flux. So what we actually do here, we actually create here a folder that's called static. So which one containing the CSS and the JavaScript file and also one folder that's called the templates and inside that we have our UI. That's called the input.html and index.html. You don't need to worry about the code. You can get this code in the video description of the GitHub link. You can grab the template file code and also the static file code. So the main code is actually inside our app.py. So let's understand this, what actually happening inside this code. We first import the OS, then import the TensorFlow as the T app and NumPy and also the Keras.preprocessing images. I think you don't need the images. You're actually using here the uh, Keras.preprocessing.image yet. So we do need to do it. Then we import here the peel. If you are using here another method in order to loading the images using peel, you can also use this peel and also the CB2. Just by default actually import it out. If you're trying to use it, you can also use it later on, right? Then we have our load model and also the render template. Render template actually help you to render the template inside your template folder. So that's why when you're creating any Flux application, you need to create a folder that's called the templates and inside that you need to pass your HTML file. So this render template is automatically go inside this template folder and it will actually fashing the file name which one you are mentioning in your programs then we have imp actually import here the sql file so that you don't you, you actually don't uh, anyone cannot use it from the uh, from the devices right so that's actually you sql the file name right so then we're going to actually import here the load images and also the image to array that you should do before in our uh, model training path also then what you can do we can simply use here a flux app that's called flux and parameter as the underscore underscore name so using this you can create one flux applications then what I can do, we can simply call this main method, main method in our app.run function, right? App.run and we can give you the debugger the true and inside our main function, you have to call this app. Now inside this app, we're going to be creating here our API. We're going to be creating our API. So this is the initial route, which we're actually calling our index.html file. This is our index.html file. So it will call in these functions. It, this is one is gap method. So when you are trying to select one for two and click the predict button, it one is the get or the post method because it will actually taking the images from our directory and also do the predictions from our model. So that's why the matter should be the get and the post method. And after that, you're going to be creating one function which will actually are taking the images from the users and they store it inside the upload folder, inside our upload folder. You can see so many images are available inside my upload filter uh, that we actually do earlier in the demo applications. So that's why it actually stored inside the upload folder. Now from the upload folder, it will trying to checking the file name and it will do the predictions based on the images, right? So what I can do, we can check for the base file path, which one is our uploads. Then what I can do, we can save it inside our upload folder so that we can do the predictions. Now based on the path, we're gonna do the predictions. So we actually create here one function which will actually help us to do the predictions. That's called the get results. So you can see the get results, which one taking the image path. So if I go on the model training, and go down, we, you can see we actually creating here one function that's called the pre-process image. So which one taking one image, which one taking one image path and we having the target size and return here the X. So X is nothing but our predictions in a NumPy array format. So we're just using the same formula in our get result functions, which, which one taking one image as a parameter, we give her the image target size and also the convert them into the image to the array, they expand the dimension. And after that, we do the predictions. After that, we do the predictions. If I go down, you can see the predictions. We can get one NumPy array. If I give here the prediction is a zero, right? That's when you get here one simple kind of array. But how many pass this array inside our np.arg max with having the levels, then we can do the actually, actually take our prediction results. So if I go here, we actually initialize here our levels. That's called zero means healthy, one means powdery, and two means rust. Then simply you're going to pass it inside our uh, predict functions, right? Predict function. After predictions, you get it 
passing inside our labels np.arg max and we convert them into string so that we don't get any error like uh, it is a none type or the sick mix mismatch this type of error if, if we don't get it out so for that we are going to convert them into the string right so that we don't get any error so well so now what you're gonna do you can simply run the file let's click on here and it will open this file in our local server or you can say local browsers and it will give here only 1 to 7.0.0.5000 like that right and you can see your model is loaded and now what you can do you can simply clicking this link okay so this is the link click here to follow link and this is our applications so now what you can do we can simply test it out right well so now i'm going to click here to choose the file okay so let's choose the file from the powder redirector and you can see the test one so let's select this one and click here to predict okay you can see the powdery so let's select another one uh, from the rust let's select this one and click to predict rust that's really working fine right and let's select here another photo from the healthy uh, this one and click to the predict right well so this is really working very fine so that's it for today now hope you enjoy the tutorial and make sure to subscribe to the channels and don't forget to hit the bell icon and I'll be back with the tutorial. So, till then, bye bye.